Tyrese Maxey had been one of the more exciting young guards the NBA had to offer during his first few years, but with the removal of James Harden and Doc Rivers, he is finally blossoming into what Sixers fans dreamed he could become. While his scoring numbers haven't been as wowing as of the last few games, Tyrese's playmaking leap is here and we know the buckets will be there. I was confident that a maxi leap would be possible and it is here. Having a young high volume three point shooting star guard next to Joel Embiid who can also get him an entry pass has been my dream forever and he's been here the whole time. Today I will be reviewing Tyrese's season so far and how this helps the Sixers in potential roster movement and the future of the franchise. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It does help me out a ton, small NBA YouTuber trying to grow. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. While Tyrese Maxey's hyper-efficient 25.5 points a night at the moment is outstanding, it's not even the part of Tyrese's season that I'm most excited about. While we knew Maxey could go get you a bucket, the area he needed to improve on to become a legit all-star level guy was playmaking. While we saw some of Tyrese as the main ball handler in between Simmons and Harden, his development as well as the removal of Doc Rivers and the hiring of Nick Nurse have resulted in an insane playmaking leap. While this is included in his development, I just want to shout out Drew Hanlon real quick because he is a factor that cannot be discounted here. Through the Sixers' first six games, Tyrese Maxey has 44 assists to just 7 turnovers, leaving him with 7.3 assists to 1.2 turnovers a game. This kind of development from Maxey was something I thought to be a far-fetched dream, but in six games against a few good defensive teams, this appears to be our new reality. During his last few games, Maxey has been much more playmaking oriented, getting 10 and 11 assists against Phoenix and Washington. While playing with Joel Embiid does create a lot of easy assists, I have also seen a number of passes made by Tyrese in these first few games that I was genuinely shocked at. I also just want to emphasize how important Nick Nurse is in all of this. While Tyrese is obviously a talented player who was great pre-Nurse, playing in an actual offense and having an actual culture is a huge component in how good the Sixers team looks right now. I'm going to put an image on the screen that can basically give you a general summary of the Doc Rivers experience. While playmaking was my main concern, Maxi's scoring leap shouldn't be discounted. While his last few games weren't the greatest, despite this, Tyrese is still averaging 25.5 points on 50-44-93. While six games isn't the largest sample size, it isn't the smallest either, and Tyrese was averaging 23 last year with Harden pre-injury and benching. Thanks, Doc. I think an efficient 24-26 and 6-7 is very much within reach given the current roster situation. But because of how good Tyrese looks, the flexibility with the roster situation is increased. The Sixers appeared to be in no man's land after the Harden saga, but Tyrese Maxey becoming a legit all-star level guy creates many new avenues for the Sixers to improve. My biggest concern with Maxey was that we'd always have to have a lead playmaking mold next to him, but while I would like to target another ball handler, we definitely don't need a lead playmaker. This as well as the three valuable draft assets acquired from the Clippers suddenly give the Sixers a good amount to move with. Some of the most discussed big names are OG Ananobi and Zach Levine, and I would love both of these at the right price. This is a Tyrese video, so I'm going to keep this brief, but Tyrese's leap is a major factor in what move we do or don't make. As far as Zach, his perceived weak playmaking will be minimized by not being the primary playmaker as well as being in Nick Nurse's offense alongside Joe and Tyrese, you know, obviously with Joe and Tyrese being there. Obviously, you know, you still have DeMar DeRozan. I mean, you had Lonzo for, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. Obviously, he's not playing without other ball handlers, but, you know, I, playing alongside Joel Embiid, you know, it, it'll be a lot, a lot different from what it's looking like with, you know, uh, Vooch in Chicago right now. While I understand the people who don't want Zach, I would just really love to see two high volume three point bucket getters alongside Joel Embiid in this offense. His contract is also a concern I understand, but hear me out. One, that would let us get him for less, and two, I don't know who will be available in free agency who is a better fit for this team than him. PG and Kawhi could be free agents, but again, that's far from guaranteed that they'll even be free agents. I think they just want to stay in LA. Their health is far from guaranteed. Their age doesn't line up as well. Again, obviously I'd rather PG or Kawhi Leonard in a vacuum than Zach Levine, but there's a lot of factors at play here. Siakam is also probably a better player, but also with Siakam, the part is the fit part. I really just want star guards or, or star wings that, will you know, again, like Siakam, again, he's probably a better player than Zach Levine, but I don't really want an interior scoring star power forward next to Joel. I want guards. I want high volume three-point shooting, high volume perimeter scoring. I don't want interior scorers next to Joel Embiid. 
OG is another guy who I'd love but has limitations. If we could replace Melton with, say, a Caruso and get OG at the three, I would love that. But Maxi Melton OG is just not enough ball handling for me. Again, Maxi's playmaking leap is significant, but I think having another supplemental playmaker is needed for this roster, regardless of what big name is targeted. Another thing with the Zach move is, you know, people who want OG over Zach, maybe we could find some level of compromise there if we could also get Alex Caruso in that deal. I really, really love what Caruso brings to the table. I think he would be absolutely elite, elite defensively. I mean, he's elite defensively regardless, but him under Nick Nurse alongside Joel and, you know, potentially OG. I mean, you know, again, if we get the Zach and Levine, you know, obviously we're probably not getting OG, but in all honesty, I mean, again, this is, this is insane. In all honesty, a realistic hope might be TJ McConnell, Buddy Heald, and OG. But, I mean, hey, if teams aren't offering up for Levine and the Bulls want to get rid of him, because, you know, again, Levine has 4 180 left on his contract. There is a world where, again, if we go all, all in, and again, we have 2026 Clippers protected, 2028 Clippers unprotected, 2029 swap from the Clippers, we got our 2030, 2028, you know, we, we got all those swaps there. There is a pathway, depending on what the asking prices are, if we could get both of them, because, man, I mean, Maxi, Levine, OG... Uh, you know, Tobias is probably out of there, but say Roko or whoever else you want to slot in there. Embiid, again, man, I, I would, you know, I mean, again, right? Like, we're dreaming now. Another thing, and probably actually the main thing with Tyrese's leap for our flexibility in trades, is that us having a 22-year-old guy who, you know, should be all-star level for the next, you know, about decade, is going to make it a lot easier to part with our picks in 2028, 2029, and 2030, because previously it was, you know, we have Joel, who's, you know, 29, 30, by then, he'll be, you know, again, right? Like, we don't know how he's going to hold up later on. But now that we have a guy like Tyrese, we can part with those picks much, much easier. No matter what the Sixers do with their newfound asset flexibility, I think Tyrese Maxey will be the star guard complement to Joel Embiid that Philadelphia has been longing for since the dawn of time. One final point about Maxey I want to make is about his work ethic. I discussed this much more in my video about five guys who I thought would blossom this season, which does include Maxey. But I have the same mindset that I did with Jalen Hurts with Tyrese Maxey. While I don't know if Tyrese will ever be in MVP discussions, I do know that he will always give it every last drop of everything he has, and after dealing with a certain number 25, that is refreshing to say the least. The Sixers having no expectations and a real coach for the first time since MySpace has made this team fun again, and I didn't really think that was possible. I'm so excited to watch Tyrese hopefully contend for his first of many all-star appearances and to see what moves we have in store with our draft capital. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Go check out all my other stuff. You know, I got a bunch of stuff out on a bunch, a bunch of teams, whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, I mean, we're coming different again. Hit that sub, like, noti. You know, I mean, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and get more consistent here. You know, we've been picking it up a little bit as the season started, but, you know, I'm really going to try and get it going here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, comment down below, you know, what you think about Tyrese to this point. Again, you know, it's not the biggest sample size, but it's not the smallest either. Six games is bigger than, you know, six games may seem, I feel like. But again, man, that's going to wrap this one up. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.